In this video, we're going to have a crack at Elf Helm, the captain of Rohan, with a quick and easy paint job that's going to make you look like a pro. and welcome to the second installment of the Muster of Rohan, a series where we follow the progress of my Rohan army through the 2019 league season. In this installment, we're going to be checking out the gorgeous new Elfhelm sculpt from Forgeworld and giving him a pretty wicked paint job, uh, which I'm pretty excited about because I've been waiting for an Elfhelm model since pretty much forever. 2005, I think he was first mentioned in The War of the Ring, uh, and, uh, and I've always wanted to see a really nice Elfhelm model, and uh, Forge World and Games Workshop have finally obliged. Uh, this guy came out uh, just a couple of weeks ago now, and uh, he's absolutely stunning. I cannot wait to crack him open and get him assembled. Uh, this is the first time I've ever worked with Forge World resin, so it's a bit of a new world for me. Uh, we've got uh, a couple of little different things to consider here, particularly uh, the different types of glues and bonding methods for preparing the model, and and uh, then once we've gone through that stuff, we'll jump into a really wicked paint job uh, because, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a stunning model with incredible details and we really want to do it justice and really make it sort of sing as a nice big hero piece for the army. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, crack open our box, obviously, and uh, give everything a bit of a prep and prepare, cut everything off the sprue, clean back the flash with my scalpel, and then we're going to jump into assembling him. Now, my glue I'm going to be using today is the Sikabond F-Gel. Uh, it's just a really fantastic super super glue base that's got a nice kind of gel consistency so it's really good for getting in on those kind of resin molds. You don't want to use any normal plastic glues, uh, you want something that's a proper super glue. You can use like a cyanoacrylate super glue, a CA glue we call it, um, but uh, this particular F-Gel is just, uh, it's just got a really nice thicker consistency than a lot of the runny sort of CA glues, even though it is uh, CA based as well. It's just a really solid super glue. And then uh, apart from our glue agent, we're also going to do uh, some kind of hard fixing or bonding or we're going to pin the various components because uh, you really want to give the resin some real structural integrity, uh, particularly on all those really really finicky joints like the wrists into elbows, you don't want kind of things popping off. It's not as weighty as metal, which you just absolutely must pin, but you know, it's a $58 model. We really want it to be well secured and, and really strongly bonded. And then once that is all assembled, we'll come back with a bit of, bit of green stuff and fill in any of the gaps that we need to, and then we can jump into painting. So I'm gonna jump into time-lapse mode and smash that out for you guys, and you can watch it all unfold, and then we'll be back with our paint scheme. Alright, so that is Elfhelm assembled. A relatively easy build, just a few little finicky parts that took a little bit and I just had a, a bit of green stuff work to do around some of our limb joints and that massive crack that we see there in the saddle, but that should now paint up fine. We'll just have a quick look at our little foot fellow as well. I had to do a little bit of a hot water dip on the saw just to get it straight, but everything else was really quite straight out of the packet, which was quite good. Uh, and there was uh, very little flash actually, so I'm pretty impressed with this mold to be honest. The detail looks great, very little scrag and very easy to assemble. So I'm just going to go and give these guys a quick prime and then we can jump into the paint job. So now that Elf Helm is assembled and primed, it's time to crack on with our paint job. Now the first thing to do, as always, is to break down the target model into specific regions and then develop a colour palette for each of those regions. Now for Elf Helm, I've broken him down into 10 separate painting zones uh, and they are the hair, the skin, the horse's hair, the horse flesh, the leather strapping, the hooves, the silver metallics, the gold metallics, the red fabric and the green leather, which is something a bit new for 
us, obviously, Rohan's usually got a lot of kind of ready brown leather, but uh, on the box art, you can see some really nice green leather stylings for Elf Helm, and I'm a big sucker for Rohan greens. I absolutely love them. So that's going to be something fun to experiment with this paint job. Uh, and we've also got a nice kind of classic Rohan cloak, just like we do with all sorts of Rohan models. But because we're bringing so much green into the leather, we're going to take that into a nice red region. Not quite as bright as our normal red for the red fabric. We're going to tone it down a little bit because it's quite a large cloak and we don't want to overwhelm with red. Uh, but that should look pretty nice as well. So, uh, some classic Rohan stuff, but also some really great uh, kind of different things. Uh, he has an incredible mane of hair as well, which we really get to do a nice straw head kind of paint job for that as well. So, going to be a pretty exciting model to paint. Now, in terms of where we start, last time we had a bit of a chat about uh, different types of painting methods, putting all your base coats down, putting all your washes down, and then taking each region through to completion. But I'm actually going to do something a little bit different this time. What I'm going to do is just grab the mounted Elf Helm sculpt and just knock the horse out base coat, shade, and highlights to completion, and then a horse will be done, and then I will have my uh, two Elf Helm models, one sitting on a horse and one on foot, and then we'll work those from beginning to end. So first up, we're going to knock out the horse. Let's jump in to layer number one. So first up is our horse flesh. Now we've got three main colors that we're going to be using, the first of which is our charred brown. Now this is our classic brown base coat, which is very similar to the NATO brown prime. So we can put that down relatively thinly. You don't have to get a really thick layer. And with the translucent paint over the prime, that's going to look quite nice for our brown skin tone. Then we'll move up into some dark flesh tone and finally finish with a bit of tusk or fur, sort of moving up through the graduated browns. Now the, uh, the trick with all horse flesh is as we move up the highlight colors, we apply less and less, just favoring the higher regions of the horse's muscles and kind of really creating that definition and creating some lovely highlights across the muscle tone. And then once that's finished, we'll come back and we'll do a nice wash of graveyard earth over all of the layers just to tie them in together. And then if necessary, we can go back and pick out a little bit more highlights, but that should be enough to do it. We'll see how we go as it happens. First up is our charred brown. So we get that down and that one is going to go all over the whole skin. So we want to keep that relatively thin, so I'm just going to grab some Lamian Medium and kind of pull that out a bit onto my wet palette, just so that it is really nice and thin. It's all about keeping these layers thin, and then we can get in, and, and as you can see, it is relatively close. This is sort of slightly kind of cooler, I guess, than the kind of warmth of the NATO Brown, which is exactly where we want to be for our base coat. Uh, and the uh, translucent paint there, it uh, is just sliding straight over our prime very nicely. So I'll get this all dug in and then we'll come back and have a look at the first highlight. So that's the end of our charred brown. I've also hit all of our saddle work as well, just this main kind of leather padding here, as well as the actual saddle itself. Now we're gonna jump into our dark flesh tone, uh, which is gonna be the first highlight. Now, the trick with the, the dark flesh tone and the tusk or fur highlights is to keep them relatively thin as well, because we want them to blend quite nicely with the layers that are underneath them. So I've just loaded my brush up with a bit of Lamian Medium, gonna pull that over to the side. It's a little bit thin. Then pull a bit more pigment. There we go, that looks relatively good. And I'll draw that out over the wet palette so it's not overloaded on the brush. And now we're gonna pick a relatively nice spot to begin with. Let's go down here on the hind of the horse and we're just picking the very top kind of ridges of, uh, of the musculature. And we don't wanna over highlight it here. Uh, because we wanna kinda leave as much as that color in the recesses as we can. Uh, to really create that definition. And we go right up the back of the muscle there, across the top. There's one trick you can sort of do as well with areas that are quite flat by not kind of painting them in one sort of big flat color by creating a bit of breaks with your highlights. You can actually create definition that isn't there. Uh, but luckily enough on this particular sculpt, we've got so much gorgeous definition. There's not a lot of uh, regions that we're going to have to do that. All of these flat surfaces are really nice. The tricky one, of course, is up here, the horse's neck. That one's always a little bit flat. But even in this sculpt, you can see here they've got to quite serious lengths to put some nice definition into the muscle uh, of the horse there on the neck, which is really refreshing to see. There we are, across the top of that muscle there. 
The knee joints are always good, they've got lots of definition in them so you can really uh, hit them quite heavily with this first highlight and then we'll give them another little highlight there and as well as the, uh, I, I guess, hip joints? I get, do, do horses have two hips? Is this the hip and this the shoulder? I suppose it's the shoulder. The horse's shoulders always have uh, really nice musculature too. Now you can see already as the layer is drying it's blending quite well because we've kept it nice and thin uh, and that's the trick for these particular muscle highlights. Keeping it thin means the blends work well. So now we bring Tuscan fur into the horse's skin tone, but what I'm going to do is actually blend it just a little bit with dark flesh tone, because it's it's a little too disparate between flesh tone and Tuscan, uh, uh, just to kind of really help that blend. We'll keep it nice and thin, but just to kind of break that color back. So I've already got a little bit of Tuscan fur down there in my palette, and I'll come over here to my uh, dark flesh tone and bring just a little bit of that in just to pull it back a couple of shades. There we go, that's looking a little bit better. And now, of course, wash your brush out before you bring your Larman Medium in. There's nothing worse than uh, filling your Larman Medium pot with, uh, with some paint. Uh, it's not something you want in there. There we go, now I've got a nice thin layer and now we can start to really pick out the very tops of the muscles. Now we want to be very delicate with this layer because it is quite disparate. Uh, don't be too alarmed by the contrast between uh, the tusk or fur and, the, and the, the layers beneath it because this will all be blended back with, uh, with a wash uh, which will help knock some of that contrast back but you just don't want to go too heavy or you basically will have a tusk or fur coloured horse. But what we're doing here is creating the little reflections and points of light as the muscle ripples under the sunlight. Remember to keep doing your uh, leather work here as well. There's a lot of really nice raised areas for this tusk or fur layer here on the saddlery. Uh, don't worry about the, uh, the trim, we'll come back later with a different colour when we're doing the uh, leather strapping and hit that and that will look quite nice. We're just focusing on the leather itself. You can see already these layers here as they start to dry they do blend really nicely so always remember your paint looks brighter when it goes down with this layer. Now the final layer which is going to form the very top of our highlight is just some 100% tusk or fur. So I'm going to bring a fresh batch of that in, nice and far away from my 50-50 uh, mix so I don't accidentally draw from the 50-50 which has happened before. Uh, wash my brush out and then dip into my Larman medium and thin that out just as we have all the other layers. There we go. That might be a little bit too thin. Let's bring a tiny bit more tusk or back in. It's quite easy to go heavy handed with the Laman Medium, it's a very, very capable thinner. There we go, that looks better. Draw that out across the wet palette. And you can still see I'm just using my large layer brush because it's all about the control that you can create. You don't have to have a tiny brush and you just want to move across the musculature in tiny little kind of uh, horizontal motions. Uh, no kind of big swipes because that's where you accidentally spill all the way over. Now remembering this is a very, very top highlight. We don't need to go crazy with that. I've got a little bit too much on the brush. Let's pull that out. There we go. Nice little horizontal strokes across the very top of the highlight. The key with horse muscles is just taking your time. Just taking your time. Alright, so that is our horse flesh finish. Now you can see by keeping the layers nice and thin and really managing those blends, we don't even need to wash it back. The muscle tones look really nice and well defined. So now what we're going to do is jump into doing our horse's hair. So the first colour for that is once again just hitting all of our horse hair with our base coat charred brown to liven up that brown undertone. And then we're going to go straight into applying very carefully quite a light colour, uh, a tan, which as you can see is quite 
quite bright, and uh, and that'll give us the really nice top highlight across all of the horse hair, and then we'll do a nice big wash to separate all of that hair and really bring in the tone and definition. So up first, we're onto the charred brown and then into tan. So that's the charred brown and the tan down, and you can see it's really started to create a bit of distinction and add that highlight, but I just think I want to push it a little bit more before I wash it back, so I'm going to hit it with a bit of a dry brush of Kaki from Vallejo's Game Color range, and then just a final really light dry brush with Bone White, which is like a nice old school bleach bone from Games Workshop, uh, just to give it a little bit more pop, and then uh, we'll come in with our nice Agrax Earthshade wash and blend all of that together. So, first up I'm just going to grab myself uh, some uh, paper towel, get my car key ready. Now I've chosen a particularly uh, specific brush for this purpose. It's quite broad as you can see, uh, but it's pretty firm, uh, which is important because we need to be able to dry brush like crazy all over this model, but when we get into the hair, I'm going to need it to still be quite controlled and not get it all over the horse's skin tone. Uh, so the kind of the shape is really important here as opposed to using my traditional dry brush, which is basically just a really beat up old messy brush. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of this car key, just load a tiny bit onto the brush, and then, as always, with dry brushing, we want to want to pull the vast majority of it out, and then come in and drag it pretty firmly across the top, and you can see that's really adding a nice highlight there across our two layers that are already down. I'll just load myself up with a little bit more. Now you can see I'm favoring one brush. This is my, uh, sorry, one side. This is my loaded side. And that just helps me get a bit of control because uh, I'm not sort of flicking back and back and forth. Uh, so it's, it's almost an overbrush, uh, you know, really quite a heavily loaded dry brush than a really kind of traditional powder dry brush where you've got very little on the brush. That's looking fantastic. Now this is the tricky one, of course. This is where we come in and we pull across the top of the hairs here, a little bit too much on the brush, without spilling it onto the horse flesh. Beautiful. And that's why your brush shape is important, because I was able to get in there really easily without doing any damage to the, uh, the existing paint job. So that's looking a lot better. Now we'll just grab a tiny little bit of our bone white, and I won't go crazy with this, because uh, it is, you know, quite a nice bone color. So I'm really going to pull that off, and this is just going to be just a tiny little bit to really make that pop. And now to tie those layers all together, I'm just going to hit it with some Agrax Earthshade, uh, which is, you know, as we all know, the absolute jack of all shades. <laughs> jack, jack of all shades. That was good. And, uh, and that, you can see, it really just ties it all together nicely and brings it into a nice, well-blended kind of palette and creates some nice tone in those shadows. There we go, that hair is looking absolutely fantastic. So, that's the flesh done, that's the hair done. So, what do we have left for our horse? Well, of course, we've got the hooves. The hooves are nice and simple. It's just a two-step process, as always. We're going to hit it with uh, some Abaddon Black first, just to kind of really knock back, get us a nice black working space. And then we'll come in with our Storm Vermin Fur, which is quite a nice kind of, almost, it's a grey that leans into the green just a little bit. It's quite a nice, interesting tone, uh, and we're going to use use that to just do some really subtle edge highlights around the very edge of the hooves. So I'm going to jump in, grab my black, smash those out, and then we'll get into our Storm Vermin fur highlights.
So I just hit the hooves with a little bit of Nuln oil just to really blend that nice grey highlight with the uh, with the black hooves and you can see that's turned out really well. And now our horse is completed. So that takes us to stage two which is of course Elfhelm himself. Now we're going to shake up our approach a little bit here and what we're going to do is work through every single zone on Elfhelm and hit all of the base coats, get all of those base coats down and then we're going to shade the entire model and then we'll go back to moving zone by zone taking it from from the shaded stage all the way through its highlight layers to completion. So our first base coat that's going to go down is our biggest and that is going to be our greens. So up first it's onto our green layers. Obviously we've got all around the armor, the back of the shield, all across the chest plate, the shoulders and our arm guards as well. Pretty much anywhere there's leather armor that's traditionally brown, today it's going to be green. Our first coat to go down will be a nice coat of Caliban green which is a really lovely base coat and then I'll probably do a bit of a 50-50 uh, between Caliban green and Warpstone glow which will be a bit of a pre-shade highlight and then when we come back and do our shading uh, we probably won't need to highlight any more beyond that because it's quite a dark green leather. So a pretty easy layer to begin with. I'm going to jump into hitting down the Caliban green and then we'll come back for the warp stone. Alright, so I'm going to grab a bit of Caliban and bring it out onto my wet palette because it's an exceedingly thick paint and it's really important that we're pretty thin in these areas. We still want to get good coverage because we don't want too much showing over the brown. We want it to be a solid green. But you'll notice that all of these armor areas have a lot of incredible gold detail and we need the thin paint to kind of flow over that, get into all the recesses and we don't want to clog up any of this gorgeous sculpting that the guys at Forge World have done. So I've brought that in there. I'm going to grab some Lamy and Medium and you'll notice I'm also using my fine detail brush uh, because I just want a lot more control and uh, it's going to be a lot easier. In fact, I'm going to thin it out with my big brush so I can get a decent amount of Lamy and in there. There we go. Now I'll just pull that off onto my thin. There we go. Very nice. Stretch that out on the palette. Alright, you know what? We've been painting Mr. Mounted for a long time. Let's begin with our thick boy, our little foot mounted guy. So, I'm going to start with the shield. It's a nice broad area. Now, because this is, of course, our first layer going down, we don't really have to worry about much at all. We've got a nice thin paint. We're not going to obscure any details, and we don't have to go crazy about avoiding anything. So, be economical with your time. These are the steps that you can uh, afford to blast through quickly. Uh, and then uh, that'll give you more time to focus on all the really careful detail stuff later on. Remember to get the rim of the shield all the way round, but also make sure you hit these details. It feels strange because, of course, they will be predominantly gold, but we've thinned down our paint so that we can use it almost wash-like, so that we can get right into the recesses of those gold detailing, so that there is a little bit of green behind them. This will be the last time that these particular areas are hit with any kind of green. We won't bother uh, hitting highlights or anything like that into this. We just want a bit of green in the recess, and and it'll be all about that gold detail. The Caliban green is down, you can see that's looking really nice once it dries, it's a really lovely tone like the old school Dark Angels green. And now we're going to do our pre-shade highlight, uh, which is just going to be a 50-50 mix of our Caliban green and our Warpstone glow, or the old school Goblin green. So I've pre-mixed that up down in the palette below, as we can see here, and it's you know just a nice touch lighter than, uh, than our classic kind of Caliban green, I'll show you guys the difference there. Once I've found my Caliban green, there we go. Uh, so you can have a look at, uh, at the brush versus what I've got there. You can see it's a nice shade lighter. So once you've got your 50-50 mix, remember to grab a little bit of Lalm and Medium because with all these highlights, and uh, we really want them to be nice and thin so that they blend really nicely into the layers below. And then I'm just going to grab my small brush once more and uh, and start to work out. Now, it's pretty tricky with uh, with these various flat areas because uh, there's not a lot of kind of definition to give to the highlight. So you've got to sort of work out how you want to treat them. Now, because we're using a nice thin layer, it gives us the ability to really kind of overshade and highlight what's there just by kind of spreading a little bit of a diluted layer, maybe focusing in sort of thin lines around and leaving kind of areas of different 
concentration of pigment across the shield just to get a nice variation of tone. Uh, and you can see that's working really well there. Just by kind of leaving different areas having more pigment concentration, you get nice highlights that ripple across the shield and create the kind of look that it's got a, a little bit of raised areas when it's a pretty flat surface. Now with all our various armor paneling, the highlights are much easier. We can just pick out and really accentuate those curves, uh, putting in uh, just a little bit around the edges just to kind of color in and, and, and create a little bit of definition. Uh, but we don't want to go too crazy. Uh, and we will knock this, of course, back with our main shade for the whole armor, which will be Agrax Earthshade, which is that nice, beautiful brown workhorse shade. That is our green highlight down. You can see it's nice and subtle, just doing the job to give that a little bit of a lift and a little bit more toning. Now we're gonna jump into the second largest kind of layer for Elf Helm, and that is our red fabric. Uh, it makes sense to do these sorts of layers down first because they're kind of underneath everything. We've got straps and shields and things going all over the fabric and all over the armor, so that's why we're doing these first. So now we're into the reds. Now, we're doing a wonderful uh, kind of classic red Rohan scheme that I normally do using a three-tiered process, hitting it with uh, Scarlet Red first, let's get these in the right order, Scarlet Red, and then Gory Red, and then a final uh, Bloody Red highlight. Now, I, I do a bit of a, a kind of an interesting technique here. It's sort of a layer highlight with a little bit of wet blending. Essentially, the Scarlet Red goes down all over first, and then we'll move into the Gory Red and the Blood Red as it's sort of still dry, and, uh, and kind of diluted a little with Lamian, just to get some really nice blends. Now, when we do focus on the cloak, which is uh, at the back here. Uh, we'll kind of play it by ear, but if it seems like it's pushing it a little bit too much, getting a little bit too bright, we might pull back some of the bloody red highlights but we'll definitely get a lot of those in on all of the nifty bits of fabric in and around here on the back of all of the uh, the arms and the legs and all that sort of stuff. So let's jump into our very first layer. I'll uh, grab myself the Scarlet Red and we'll chuck that in on the palette. Uh, sorry if there's a little bit of sheen on the uh, the workbench now. I just spilled Laman Medium everywhere, which is fantastic. <laughs> there goes $4 worth of Laman Medium. And now my legs are exceedingly sticky. Okay, so we'll grab our Scarlet Red. That needs to be thinned out a little bit. I'll uh, open the Laman Medium, grab some of the Laman Medium, put it on the palette, and then I'll shut the Laman Medium. Yes, well, there we go. We learn something new every day, don't we? And uh, literally everything is so sticky now. Okay, so in comes our Scarlet Red. And we're just going to uh, put a nice even base coat. I've kept it nice and thin as always. We all know that thin layers are the best layers. Uh, and that allows our brown undertone to come through and keep that nice and warm. And it also means that we don't get big, thick, gross glugs of paint. Uh, and it keeps it nice and uh, liquidy for our wet blending. Keeping it off the areas of the horse skin and the green are definitely of the most importance because we do not want to have to repaint those again. And then once we've done the back of the cloak, we've got all these little areas of fabric in here on the backs of the legs, the backs of the arms, and then possibly a little bit in and around the torso. Occasionally there's a little bit of cloth poking through. So we're going to jump into the Scarlet Red and then we'll come back for the next highlight. So that's our Scarlet Red down, it's a really lovely scab red undertone, nice and dark. And now we're going to move into the first highlight while it's still nice and wet, and that is going to be some Gory Red. Uh, gory Red's a really lovely uh, red colour, just like the old school Games Workshop Red Gore. I'll start with our little foot mounted guy here, because you can really see the, uh, the nice kind of raised sections on that big swishing cloak. So I'm just going to come in, load my brush with a little bit of our Red Gore, and just come in and pick out the vast majority. You can see everything is still totally wet. Now, I haven't uh, diluted this down at all, actually. This is just straight red gore because I don't want it to run too much knowing I've, I've got so much moisture already on there from the Lamian medium layer. Uh, and I'm just putting that in on all of the raised areas. 
and going quite broad with it too because I want this to be my primary tone. Uh, it's 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 a really really lovely red, uh, and we'll do our final highlight with uh, with blood red later on. So this can afford can afford to be quite a large red layer. There we go. That's looking awesome. You can see it's just blending absolutely seamlessly with the uh, the scarlet red underneath. So you can see that red gore is looking absolutely fantastic. A really nice two-tone happening now. The red's got a little bit of vibrancy, but I think we can push it a little bit further. So I'm going to load myself up with some of my bloody red, uh, again from Vallejo's Game Color. And we're just going to come in and push the very kind of tops of, uh, of the curves and, uh, and, and really staying on the very, very tops of the surfaces. You can see everything's still very wet. Um, once again, using neat bloody red this time. It's not thinned at all. I'm letting the uh, moisture that's already on the paint job... Oh, nearly put red everywhere then. I'm letting the moisture that's already on the model do the work for me. There we go, pick out a few of these little edges as well. Always remember to look at the backs and the sides, not just the very top facing when you're doing your highlights. Highlights are three-dimensional. Now we'll get in here on the back of our little uh, cloth leggings. I find that the bloody red really makes the small kind of red details really sing. Uh, just because it's, you know, it's that nice highlight that catches your eye, right? So you really notice, oh yeah, okay, damn, there's red down there. There's red down there. Whereas with so much brown going on in these Rohan schemes, usually sometimes the drab red tones can get lost. So the blood red really helps to distinguish them. Don't forget to get all of these nifty little layers underneath the legs because they can be quite tricky, but they are still there and you do need to make sure you get all the layers on them. Uh, it's really important that you get a solid covering of red uh, and then once you've got them down there it, it's you know it's, it's certainly a lot easier you just need to get a few little bits of highlight in there and uh, and they'll work nicely now look at that isn't that a gorgeous vibrant Rohan red that is what we love to see fantastic so that's our red cloth finished, and now we're on to the leather strapping. Now the base coat for the leather strapping before the wash goes down is just going to be this lovely earth in Vallejo game color, very similar to the graveyard earth in uh, old school Citadel. Uh, it's a really, really lovely tone, and that's going to be a nice base coat over the top of our uh, existing prime, which of course is already in the brown space. Uh, and then once we've got our Agrax Earthshade washed down, we'll come and do a couple of two-stage highlights with khaki and bone white down the line. But for now, we're going to jump in and grab our earth. Uh, we don't have to thin this too much. Uh, it is going down on our prime, uh, so we'll just give it a little bit just to let that brown show through and keep it all tied in. Once again, going to use my relatively uh, medium brush. But we don't mind that this is quite a light brown because of course it is about to be washed back with Agrax Earthshade. Now obviously it's a Rohan dude, so there are leather straps everywhere, so just make sure you keep a, uh, a leather eye, I mean a weather eye out for uh, your leather strapping. I always forget one or two and end up going back and having to redo this layer down the line, which is kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, we're going to do the exact same thing uh, for all of our horse strapping as well, all of the reins, all of the bridle, it's all in this same pattern. So that's our strapping base coat down, and now it's on to our silver metallics. As always, we've got a classic combination of a lead belch base coat, then we'll give it some beautiful null oil, and then do a few highlights with Stormhost Silver. So, first up, we're going to jump into our lead belcher. 
crack this guy open. Give Lead Belcher a really good shake. He can be a bit thick sometimes and misbehave a little bit off the palette. Now, Lead Belcher isn't a paint that you want to thin much with Lum and Medium at all. Uh, because of the metallic flakes, it really kind of starts to mess with it a little bit and it, and it get, just gets a little bit gross, frankly. But you do want to keep it sort of thin without changing its constituency, and that's where our wet palette becomes very friendly. Just being able to pull it out in nice thin layers on the palette will help us enormously. Now, we uh, want to hit uh, the chainmail, obviously, is the kind of main area for, uh, for Elfhelm. He doesn't have a whole lot of silver on him. And then we've got areas such as the spearhead, uh, and then there's a few little kind of different uh, decorative pieces and rings and bits of buckle, uh, which will be silver. Alright, so silver base code down, now it's on to our gold. We're going to do our classic gold scheme as always, so our base layer is of course the wonderful Retributor armor from Citadel. Then once that's had a bit of Agrax Earthshade, we'll go on with a bit of a layer highlight with Liberator Gold, and then a few top highlights with Mithril Silver or Stormhost Silver in the new Citadel Metallics. Uh, so in case you guys haven't sort of seen my tutorials before, I really love the Citadel Metallics. You'll notice most of the range that I'm using is Vallejo, uh, but I just... I cannot get enough of the Citadel Metallics. Now, there is a lot of gold work to do, as there always is in Rohan. Uh, we've got lots of little details on our weapons, uh, you know, just these kind of rings, but the armor is where the bulk of the work is. All of these elevated details on Elfhelm's armor, uh, it's the opposite, actually, to Theoden's armor that we did last time in part one. Uh, it's all the raised details that are gold this time. It's not inlaid gold, which is quite nice. It's much easier to paint, and I really love the look. Uh, we've got the option of doing the gold uh, detailing on the shield, of course the gold all the way around the outside, shin pads, arm pads, chest pads, uh, there's bits of gold everywhere. Uh, sword hilts as well, and uh, scabbards, and uh, I could go on and on and on. So, I'm going to jump into smashing that out now. Just like all of our other uh, metallic elements, our silver, we don't want to thin it out uh, because it, it disrupts the flake ratio and you end up getting a really gross texture. Make sure you really give these a good shake uh, so that the flakes are well smashed through the fluid and you get a great viscosity just like that. So, I'm just going to grab a little bit out uh, and just chuck it down on my wet palette just so that I can get nice and easy thinning control uh, and I'm gonna use my fine detail brush because this is pretty fine detail <laughs> uh, cool so let's grab a little bit we'll pull it out all right, so we want to hit all of the trim on all of the armor and the detailing on these weapons. Now, of course, we want to be really careful not to smash anything on the top of our green because uh, we did just paint that and we do not want to have to go over the top. Um, but on the spear, we don't have to worry too much about messing up over the spear half just yet because we haven't done our timber work. Uh, now, it's pretty easy, really. It, it looks like it's really kind of terrifying, uh, very difficult, small detail. But as long as you keep your brush in the plane above the detail, Detail because it's so well raised uh, it's it's pretty hard to actually get it in the wrong spot uh, and that's a real tribute to how nicely uh, this has been sculpted so as long as you don't overload your brush look I'm just dragging it across the surface of the elevated details and because I've got just the right amount of gold there none of it is dropping down into the recesses and then let the brush do the work for you Well, that was an absolutely massive layer putting down all that gold detailing, but it looks absolutely fantastic. I'll show you guys the foot model as well. There's just so much amazing detail, and it's really, really fun to paint. It was super enjoyable, uh, but my hand is cramping like crazy. So, uh, we've got a couple of base coats left before we're jumping into our shades. Basically, we've got our skin and our hair, and then the timber spear, and then we are ready to jump into shading land. So we're gonna jump into doing our, uh, our skin first, uh, which is just gonna be a little base coat 
of uh, heavy skin tone from Vallejo's Game Color. And then once we've done that, we'll give it a slight pre-shade highlight of Kislev Flesh, and then our Reichland Flesh shade will go down in the shading process. So let's grab a tiny bit of our heavy skin tone. We'll chuck that in the palette. Let's have a look at that. Now, we don't want this one to be uh, too thin. This is going to be a good sort of base color for us, uh, and it's a relatively thin paint already. So we're just going to bring that in and just nice and evenly get that nice into that skin line. Now he's got a little beard as well, so we don't need to do all the way down to the beard. Very nice. Now remember, he does have fingers, he's not wearing gloves, so we need to do the hands. I always forget hands and then I end up painting everything as gloves at the end. But I'm not doing it today because we've got gorgeous Forge World sculpted hands today that actually look like genuine fingers, uh, which is a nice change. So with that flesh base coat down, our final base layer before shading is of course our hair, because Elfhelm is a wonderful straw head, so we need to have that gorgeous golden head upon him. So we're going to start off with a leather brown base coat, uh, which will be a nice kind of earthy mid-tone to work up from, and then eventually after our, uh, after our shade layer we'll bring in a bit of plague brown, which is sort of like the old school bubonic brown, and then our top highlights will be a nice bright flash gets yellow to really get that golden straw head. So I'll grab a little bit of my leather brown. Uh, now this can be a relatively thin coat, doesn't matter if a little bit of the uh, the nice brown prime comes through because it just starts to give everything its definition, but this is the, uh, the you know, the primary base coat, so uh, it, uh, it can get all the way through the hairline. Make sure that we're keeping it nice and tight off that face, off that flesh layer that we've just put down, and of course we want to get our wonderful beard as well, because Elfheim's got a stunning little beard there, all the way around and down the sides. Uh, so make sure you grab that as well. So the base layer for the hair is down and I've also gone and taken some straight Kislev flesh and thrown some highlights on the face there and I'll chuck that on the hands as well before we do and then the base coating stage is done. So we're now four or five hours into the paint job. You can see it's now dark outside and Elf Helm is really starting to come to life. We've got a couple of our regions almost completely ticked off. The horse is looking fantastic. All the red fabric is looking really great. And we've got a lot of really great work done in all the other regions as well. All of our base coats are now down and that brings us to one of the most important phases of the paint job and that's putting down our shades. Now shades are really, really important tools that create a lot of definition and a lot of contrast and fill in all the recessed detail on the model and when we've got such a stunning model like this with some incredibly sculpted details they're absolutely beautiful. Now we're going to be working with three shades today all from the Citadel Games Workshop range. We have Nuln Oil, Agrax Earthshade and Reichland Flesh Shade. They are all a staple of many wargaming painters kits these days. They're absolutely fantastic shades. Uh, the Reichland Flesh Shade we're going to use to treat the skin. It's a really nice warming kind of flesh, uh, flesh shade that, that really tones back the skin and brings a lot of kind of uh, translucency and warmth as if there's blood living under the paint. It's a fantastic shade. And then from there, we're going to work up to our top highlights. And the Reichland Flesh Shade will probably be reapplied every now and then between different skin tone highlights, which we'll get to a bit down the track. It's a great shade. But our two workhorse shades for this model are Nuln Oil and Agrax Earth Shade. Nuln Oil is going to be exclusively used for all of our silver metallics, the chainmail, the sword, the spearhead, everywhere that's got a bit of silver detailing we put some Nuln Oil down and that creates a lovely amount of black shadow. It's basically liquid shadows Nuln Oil. It's fantastic and it looks really great on metallics because sometimes it's got a little bit of a glossy sheen which looks beautiful on metal. So the Nuln Oil will go down on all of our silvers and then we'll go into our Stormhost silver highlights from there and Agrax Earthshade is pretty much going everywhere else. Uh, it's going to go on all of our green leather armor and our gold trim which is really important because that's going to really 
really highlight uh, the recessed detail and really make that pop against the gold as well as toning the blends on the green and giving that a really nice look and it's also going to go on all of our leather strapping and saddle work and the hair of, uh, of Elfhelm's wonderful mane just to begin to put those shadows in which will uh, allow us to come back over the top with some beautiful straw head tones and give him the highlights that any good blonde headed Rohan warrior deserves. So lots of stuff to get into. It's actually a pretty good process, pretty simple, pretty easy. So we're going to jump into our Nuln oil first and the important thing to remember here is to leave time between each shade. Sometimes I like to put them all down quickly because I'm a bit lazy but the danger of that is that your shades can bleed into each other. So really, put down your null oil, wait half an hour, then do your Agrax, and then you can probably do your Reichland pretty safely because it's not going to spill off the face. But let's jump into our null oil without further talking from Lockie, and we'll get the rest of the shading underway. So up first in shading land is our Nuln Oil. Now it's always really important to make sure that you've got a nice clear workspace when we're working with washers because uh, knocking these over is rather depressing and rather expensive. Uh, so I'm just going to grab a little bit of Nuln Oil. We don't need to water these down. Uh, they're really fantastically pre kind of diluted uh, to sit in and tone everything back. So all our silvers with the Nuln Oil. Oh my god, I just love putting Nuln Oil down. Uh, my favourite is the chain, uh, chain mail. Look at that. Instant shadows, my friends. It is gorgeous stuff. Sometimes with Nuln Oil, it's actually quite beneficial to do a couple of thin coats uh, just if you really want to get some proper contrast, some proper shading happening. Uh, it can be quite useful. Remember, we want to get all of our silver. You'll often leave stuff behind. Don't get too mad at yourself for that. It happens all the time. We've got stirrups, we've got buckles, we've got little press studs on all this, uh, all this saddlery. So just take your time and knock it all off. All right, Nuln Oil done. You can see all that lovely shading on the silvers. Now it's Agrax Earthshade time. So I'm going to start working uh, out from our gorgeous little armor here and just watch that begin to pop. Look at the stunning shadows. Remember, we need to get all this leather strap, but we do have to keep it off the silvers. Oh man, look at it blend those greens and golds. That looks absolutely stunning. Remember to get the beard as well. It can be tricky uh, doing uh, the beard and not spilling onto the face. We want to save the face for Reichland flesh shade. So we're just looking for the beard at this point. So all the shades are down and Elfhelm's looking really wonderful now. We've got a few little extra layer highlights to go on some of the regions and then Elfhelm will be ready to take to the field. So we're going to hit all of our leather strapping with a couple of highlights as well as picking out all of the different tones on our hair and getting that to that beautiful straw golden colour. Uh, we've got the skin tones to finish off and then just a couple of little high glinting highlights on all of our gold and silver. We've got some Liberator armour to go down as well as some Stormho silver on both metal just to give them that tiny shining highlight while Elfhelm rides across the Palenor. Now, uh, first of all, don't be alarmed if your model's got a little bit of a shine at this stage after the shades. Sometimes if you're a total noob and forget to shake your uh, shade pots, you can get a little bit of separation between pigment and solvent in the pots, and sometimes that leaves a little bit of a sheen when the model is applied with those shades. But don't worry, that's all going to get knocked right back with the matte varnish, so they're going to look absolutely perfect. Now, let's jump into to our first round of layer highlights. We'll start with the leather strapping and Elfhelm is nearly finished. So first up is our leather strapping, which we're just going to give a couple of layers of highlight. First with a khaki and then a bone white. Just picking out the raised sections with the khaki and then the really top edge highlights with the bone white. Just to give it a little bit more of a, uh, a defined kind of graduation of tone to really capture that leather colour. Incidentally, I also use this exact colour combination, the khaki and the bone white, for all of the uh, cream detailing on the back of the shield that you 
you can see in here and I put that down before the wash so that the Agrax Earthshade would smooth all of those joints amongst the shield details. So first up we'll grab some khaki, smash that down and then we'll get these leather straps all finished. Up next, we're gonna finish Elfhelm's hair. So we've already got a nice base coat down with our shade in the recesses to create that nice tone. Now what we're gonna do is come in with some plague brown and do uh, just a really nice gentle highlight, picking out all of the various hairs on Elfhelm's head. And then once that's done, we'll come and do a final highlight which flash gets flash. Ugh with Flash Kits Yellow, and uh, and then we might do one more pass of Agrax Earthshade just to blend all those tones together. We'll see how we go, but first let's jump into our Plague Brown. So I'm going to use my small brush here, uh, just to keep it nice and controlled, just taking a little bit of paint and thinning that out as well. And what we want to do here is just spend a bit of time picking out each individual hair. Doesn't matter if we don't stay just on the highlights of the hairs because we are gonna have, we do have one more highlight to come through. But we do want to save as much as that of that recessed shadow as we can. So with the hair done, we're going to work on the skin tone and we've got one final highlight to go down and then a couple of shades and we should be looking pretty swish. Now we've got uh, a layer of Kislev Flesh down there at the moment, so what we're going to do next is a 50-50 between Kislev Flesh and Bone White and, uh, and get a nice kind of really kind of elf flesh sort of tone and do a really lovely edge highlight across the top of the skin. Uh, so I'm just going to grab some Kislev Flesh, chuck that on my palette. And uh, I'll grab a little bit more bone white. There we go, a really nice elf flesh looking tone there. And we just want to hit all the little ray sections. It's just some little banding to pick out the forehead lines. All of our ray sections. Could do with a little bit more on that forehead just there. careful not to overdo it there we go fantastic that's looking absolutely awesome all right so now I'm just gonna grab a little bit of uh, scab red or scarlet red and just pop that in uh, his tongue and his mouth because uh, elf has got a really cool pose with his mouth screaming open so we just want a little bit of warmth in there there we go that looks nice Make sure we don't do too much. Fantastic. And now I'm going to grab some pure bone white and just do one final highlight with straight bone white. And I'm just going to keep this as thin, as small as I can. We want a really, really fine line over the top of the highlights that we just did just to give a tiny little bit more definition. So that is our flesh tone finish looking absolutely awesome. If you get a little bit too much contrast between your highlight layers, you can always throw a little bit more Reichland flesh shade over the top. I've managed to do relatively well. And I've just grabbed uh, a little dot of white and then a dot of black to do the eyes. Uh, my eyes are still terrible, but I'm getting there. Practice makes perfect, as they say. There's a really nice example of that skin tone there on his left hand. So now we're gonna do our final highlights on our gold, uh, which is a pretty simple layer this time. 
but there's a, a relatively small amount of thick areas of gold. I'm going to jump in and do a layer of Liberator gold, uh, just on the kind of bigger sections, like the detail of the spear half. He doesn't have a big gold helmet, and then a few little sections on these flatter panels on his armor. So, uh, we'll grab open our Liberator gold. Now, we do not need to thin this at all. Oh, man, make sure you give a Liberator a really good shake, because it does separate like all metallics. There we go, that's looking a little bit nicer. So I'm just going to grab my fine detail brush and just grab a little bit of Liberator straight out of the pot, thin it off on my palette. And I'm just going to put that on a few kind of key areas just to add a little bit of a brassy tone to some of our golden sections. But this is a pretty small step on this model, unlike Thaedon, where we had uh, a bit more flat gold work to do. Make sure you grab the pommel and uh, the detail kind of center brass section on the shield is another really nice one. I wouldn't worry about doing it on any of the really fine gold trim. Uh, you kind of want that nice depth of the shining gold or the retributor armor, as the new paint is called, uh, to uh, really kind of sing on that so you don't need to flavor it too much with this brassy tone. Uh, but this just brings another kind of tone into that gold. So our final layer highlight for the, all of the metallics, both the gold and the silver, is just some Citadel Stormhost Silver, which is of course the new version of Mithril Silver, an absolute Citadel metallic classic. I'm just going to bring my fine detail brush in. What we're going to do is just some serious edge highlighting on all of the silver and every now and then on a little bit of the gold just to add a top highlight. So I like to add, uh, I like to start with the nice flat sections, makes it nice and easy. So obviously we've got all our gorgeous weapons with our shields and we just want be hitting the very edges, uh, leaving the kind of nice uh, sort of chainmail sort of tones that we've got there with the null oil over the top. And if you go a little bit too crazy in any regions, you can always add a little bit more null oil just to blend the highlights back with the uh, undertones and make sure that your contrast isn't too kind of obscene, which sometimes it can be because uh, Stormhost Silver is really bright, but that's why we love it because it gives us the flexibility to do those really top end highlights as well. That's nice. I'm just going to do a little bit on some of the chain mail. Uh, I don't like to do all of the chain mail, just picking out a few little regions to create some contrast across the whole mail section. Just grab a little bit more Stormhost Silver. Uh, once again, you don't want to be thinning these metallics because you'll get a weird kind of spread of flakes and then thin it out on the palette so we don't put a big glob on it, the palette of Lucky's Thumb. And just a little bit on the chain mail, picking out some of the top rings. Very nice. And then we'll do a little bit of edge highlighting down here on these stirrups, just to give them a little bit more depth. Well, Alfhelm is looking absolutely fantastic, but we have one region that we haven't even touched on, and that is, of course, the spear haft. The spear haft is present in both the foot and mounted models, and it's something that I really wanted to have a bit of a play with, because I haven't gone crazy on a spear before. So I've put together a scheme of uh, four colors. Essentially, we've got our charred brown, which is, of course, our uh, the same sort of similar tone as our prime for our base coat, and then we're going to do three layers of really kind of fine edge highlighting, trying to create a bit of a wood grain feel, starting with an earth and then a tan and then a very light kind of khaki in really thin strokes with our smallest fine brush. So the first thing we're going to do is jump onto our charred brown, grab a little bit of that in the palette and just get that down. Let's give that a good shake. I really want to work up from that true cool charred brown, scorch brown kind of look. Uh, so I want to make sure that this goes on relatively solidly because uh, I just think that sort of cool spectrum uh, is a little bit of a better base than the warm NATO brown. We just need to be really careful, of course, not to hit any of our flesh or our gold because, of course, that stuff is pretty much finished and any mistakes we make will just mean we have to repaint bits we've already done. Uh, you do need to be careful to get right up to the edges of all of the various metal bits and because it's, you know, a cylinder, it's quite easy to miss sections going all the way around. All right, fantastic. We'll wait for that to dry and then we can jump into our first level of wood grain. 
So now it's on to our wood grain. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to chuck all three of these down on my palette. And we're going to start to put them down from darkest to lightest. And then uh, having them all on the palette gives us the chance to sort of go back and forth as we decide a little bit of a couple of areas need to be darker or lighter. We've got them all ready for us. So I'll just go one, two, and a little bit of khaki as well. So I'm going to grab my tiny brush and grab a little bit of our tan, sorry, our earth. I'm just going to come in and pull most of the paint off the brush and then we're just going to do a few little lines, keeping them nice and thin. And then slowly rotate the shaft. So now our next color is tan. So once again, you don't want it too thick on the brush. Get your hands in a nice anchored position. And then we're gonna come in and do just a few more lines. Each time we move up the highlight color, we'll do less and less lines because uh, we, we want those lower layers to show through. Now any areas that you've gone too thick with a lower color, just use that as a, uh, a site to pick out another couple of extra lines with the lighter color and then that will break that all right up. Beautiful, and now we'll go into our khaki, which is our top color. Now the khaki is a lot lighter, so we need to make sure we've got good control when we're using this one. So bracing our hands. And just a few really, really light lines. So there we can see the really fine lines have created quite a nice grain-like tone. It looks really nice on our foot version as well. And now what we want to do is blend that all back with a couple of thin coats of Agrax Earthshade just to tie all of those tones together. Because some of that khaki is popping a little bit and we want to bring everything nice and tight, so we give our Agrax a nice shake so that we don't get that gross gloss finish. And uh, then we just slather some lovely Agrax all over. Now, of course, we do need to be careful because our hand is right there and we don't want to go putting Agrax Earthshade all over our skin tone. Uh, that'll pull out all the nice work that our Reichlin did. And we'll get in and around and then we'll have a lovely looking spear shaft. Being very careful of our skin. And make sure you get all sides. It's always so easy to leave something out, particularly on the sides closest to the model themselves. And on that note, make sure you don't put shade and flick shade all over the beautiful model that you've just finished painting, because uh, that turns into a nightmare. There we go, look at that. That looks absolutely fantastic. So that'll dry and come out nice and even. And now, as you can see, Alfhelm's getting pretty close to being finished. Now the next thing we need to do is, uh, finish the little details on the base there, it's just some simple stuff, some rocks and a few knives and there's a little bit of uh, shield action, so nothing crazy there, just greys and browns and silvers. And then Elfhelm is ready for a matte varnish and a nice base. So I've hit Elfhelm with a matte varnish and that has flattened back all of those gross sheeny washes and really blended all the colours together. He's looking absolutely ace. One thing that you might notice when you hit certain paints with the matte varnish that are metallics like the Citadel metallic range is sometimes they lose a little bit of their lustre. So what I did was I just went back over my gold detailing with a little bit more Retributor armour and picked out a few different things in Stormhost silver, uh, sort of buckles and rivets and little bits of sword details and that sort of thing just to make sure that I had the total utmost sparkle on all of those metallics to really glint in the sun as Elfhelm rides across the Palenor. Then I just did my traditional basing method which we'll go into in another video and now he is finished. I am super happy with how he's turned out. I really took my time. You can see outside it is the morning after uh, the day that I started him and I, I wanted to make sure I did a really nice job on him and I'm really happy with how he came out. I'm pretty rubbish at doing skin tone and faces and eyes. That's definitely my weakest area as a painter 
painter, so I really tried to improve there, and I think I have definitely since Thayden and anyway. Still a lot to go, but I'm really happy with how he turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed that painting tutorial. I'll put a link down in the description below to convert between all the different paint brands so that if you guys are using pure Citadel or pure Vallejo, you can convert to whatever color you need from the paints that I used in this video. We've got a whole lot more planned for Muster of Rohan straight away. I need to start getting some of my Royal Guard army done. Uh, so we're going to do a conversion guide on Royal Guard, uh, converting and, and kind of mixing up the pre existing poses in the metal models that are currently available, but also showing you guys how to make your own Royal Guard from Plastic Riders of Rohan that look absolutely awesome. So stay tuned for that. We'll have a whole lot more painting tutorials coming out because it's nearly the end of March and our first event that this sort of series is building towards is at the end of April. So I've got to get my whole 800 point army ready by April. So expect a big flurry of tutorials and uh, I might do some battle reports as well for practice matches. So there is lots of great stuff on the horizon. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new around here, make sure you subscribe and check out all the other Lord of the Rings strategy battle game content we have here on the channel. We've got loads of cool stuff now. It's really starting to build up over the last sort of year and a half since we've been kicking around. We got epic terrain and battle reports and we have so much more planned on the way. So make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new around here. And thank you so much for watching guys. In the meantime, keep on SBG Gaming. Cheers lads.